I just recently published the What's on My iPad video. I'll, I'll link to that in the description below. And I talked about all the apps, widgets, shortcuts that lived in the dock and the home screen. I have a few apps that you don't ever see on the home screen or in the dock. So I wanted to make a video covering those because I do use them and they are important to the way I use my iPad. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. The first app is Ouchie. This is a new app and it's actually really interesting. Ouchie is an app that you use for blocking other apps. Let me explain. So this uses shortcuts automation and a Safari extension. So that when you get this all set up and it does take a little bit to get set up because of the way iOS implements this kind of thing, but you can pick certain apps and then you can pick a time frame. And when you have this all enabled, it will block those apps from being used in that time period. Now, obviously you can go in and shut that off and get to those apps if like an emergency happens or like you need to DM somebody on Twitter or something really quickly. Like you, you can do that, but what this is great for is when you really need to focus on specific tasks. So for example, I've been using this a lot for when I'm writing lately. I have a ton of scripts that I'm trying to go through. I'm trying to get caught up. I mean, February is the month I am going to get caught up. So I've been using this to block Tweetbot and the Twitter website. So what I can do is when I enable this filter, I can pick a time frame. It could be 30 minutes or it can be to a set time or it can be an unlimited amount of time until I physically go back in and turn it off. And when this is enabled, if I try and open Tweetbot, it'll open the app, but then it'll immediately kick me out thanks to the shortcuts automation. Or if I go to the Twitter website via Safari, the Safari extension will just block Twitter. What's really cool is because Ouchie is so focused on shortcuts, you can actually pair it with other shortcuts. So I talked in my What's on My iPad video about the mode cut shortcut. Well, I recently added the active Twitter filter to my deep writing section. So that way when I enable deep writing, it automatically turns on that filter. Cardhop is made by the same developers that make Fantastical. Cardhop is a contacts app, and there's two key things that I really like about it. It's design, I just think the way it lays out information, like people's personal information and stuff like that, is really good. But I also really like its search feature. I find it so much faster and so much more robust than the built-in contacts app search. And what's cool about this is if you already pay for Fantastical, you actually get Cardhop for free. It's all part of the Fantastical bundle. So I was already paying for Fantastical when they released this update and included this. So I just got it for free. Font case is how I install fonts on the iPad. Installing fonts is still really important, even in 2022, especially if you do graphic design or video editing or anything like that. Having an array of fonts is important. Now, Apple did a release a much smoother way of installing fonts, but it hasn't really taken off due to some limitations in the way it works. It's, it's just kind of funky. So a lot of people are still using the profile way. Basically, what font case does is it allows you to load up the font files into the app, then you install a profile onto your iPad, and that profile installs those font files onto your iPad so other apps can use them. So apps like LumaFusion or Photoshop or even Drafts, I can access those fonts from there. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is the perfect service for me. I'm an incredibly slow reader, and with ADHD, it's hard for me to focus up, especially on big books. This is a service that condenses nonfiction books into 10 to 15 minute key points by either reading or listening to short audio versions called shortcast. I really love shortcast. It's like a, a short podcast, but for a book. It's really convenient for me to listen in the car or while I'm working around the house. There are more than 5,000 titles and 27 categories to pick from. Blinkist has a new section called 22 Powerful Ideas for 2022. This is full of blinks and shortcasts that just have useful information and powerful ideas for making your 2022 even better. So a few shortcasts that I've been listening to recently, uh, there's Hyper Focus by Chris Bailey, Deep Work by Cal Newport, and Making Habits, Breaking Habits by Jeremy Dean. All of these shortcasts, I love how I was able to get the key points from these books without having to sit through the fluff. 
In hyperfocus, I was able to get useful information for fixing my focus. I have ADHD. I struggle so much with focusing and staying on task, and I actually got useful information out of this shortcast. Understand the power of ideas in 15 minutes with Blinkist. Use the link in the description below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off a premium membership. My thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Floating Player is an app I heard from the Mac Stories gang. It's really an iPhone app, but it works perfectly on the iPad. It puts the music you are listening to in a picture in picture window. When you enable this, it will show an image of the album from the song that is playing. It'll also display the name of the artist and the name of the song as well. You can change the picture in picture playback controls to skip forward and back. Picture in picture has some limitations and that's why it's going to show that it's 15 seconds either back or forward. Floating player is just a nice application to pair with the Magic Keyboard considering there's no media playback controls on the Magic Keyboard. You have to go into control panel. I just like having a little floating window of what song is playing from what album and I can you know either skip or play pause. I can just see what's playing. Just kind of a nice touch. Indel is an AI sound service. Now, full disclosure, Indel has been a previous sponsor of the channel, uh, but I really like the app. In fact, I pay for the subscription myself. Uh, so disclosure. Indel has different moods like sleep or relax, but the one I really like is focus. I've been playing this a lot when I'm writing. I throw on noise canceling headphones, grab my iPad, and I start writing the magical words that you are listening to now. I find Endel's AI to be really good. Like it, it knows the kind of beat and tempo, the sounds to play that help me stay focused. I, I don't exactly know how it works. I'm not a neuroscientist, um, but just as somebody that's been using it, I can definitely tell the difference between when I'm not using it and when I am using it. Dark Noise is a noise app I talk about every time I get a chance. It's so good. So if you're somebody that just likes really simple background noises, like rain sounds or campfire, this is the app for you. When I'm really stressed and I just kind of need to relieve some tension, I, I put on dark noise and just kind of like let it mellow me out. It's really good for that. What I like about dark noise is you can combine sounds to make scenes. You can put them at different volumes. So like I have a camping soundscape. When music is just too much for my ADHD riddled brain, I turn to dark noise and dark noise is, is really good for that kind of thing. PDF expert is my serious business app. Like this, when I open that, I know I'm getting serious about business. This is where I sign contracts, annotate documents and organize my tax forms. This is a great app to do a lot with PDFs. It is a subscription app, so I don't know if this is necessarily for everyone. Like if you only do things with PDFs like a couple of times a year, there, there's probably better alternatives for that. Uh, but if you're somebody like me that's just getting a ton of PDFs coming in, you need to make them fillable, you need to add fields, sign them. You could do all of that in PDF Expert and it just works really well for me. What's also really cool about PDF Expert is you can export the files, not just as PDFs, but you can export them in the Microsoft Office format. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you can also ex export them in text files and images. So there's kind of a wider way of getting uh, your documents out of the app. Concepts is an app I use for creating maps. What's cool about Concepts is it has an infinite canvas, meaning you can swipe around, zoom out, move the canvas down and just keep drawing as much as you want. Like there's no edges, there's no limitations to it. And this makes it really great for mapping out projects. Now it's totally designed for drawing and doing that kind of thing, but I can't draw to save my life. Now there's two apps that I like to use for mapping out projects. In my What's On My iPad video, I talked about MindNode that lives on my home screen. I gravitate to that one a bit more, but MindNode is very much for using like a keyboard and like keyboard shortcuts and jumping through that. Concepts is great if I wanna sit down with the Apple Pencil and the paper like and just sketch something out and really just draw on my iPad. Um, I, I like it for that kind of thing. So it really depends on what mood I'm in as to which app I gravitate towards. Stop the Madness is a Safari extension. What Stop the Madness does is really clever. It, it actually does a whole lot of things. Uh, it basically cleans up the web 
for lack of a better term, I guess, it turns off a lot of the stuff that just makes the web slow, especially like big web pages that end up using a ton of RAM. Like it, it really kind of cuts down on that stuff. So stuff like AMP and like link tracking and stuff like that, it turns all that off. Now, Stop the Madness does a ton of different things. I don't fully understand everything it does. I'm not a web developer, but I can definitely tell the difference between when it's enabled and when it's not enabled. I've been kind of like experimenting with that lately to actually see if I can see the difference. And yeah, especially when it comes to like big news websites, those seem to be the big culprits that really slow down and Stop the Madness seems to really speed those up. Pushcut is the app I use for linking shortcuts and the web together. So for example, the way I use this is with the web service Zapier. Zapier is a web automation platform and I've got a couple of things set up there, but the thing that I, I really like the most is Zapier watches my YouTube channel. So anytime I publish a new YouTube video, it sends a message to Pushcut that's, hey, there's a new video on this YouTube channel. I get a notification on my iPhone and iPad and I can tap that notification and it then runs my publish new video shortcut. And what this does is it takes that video from YouTube, it takes the link to it, takes the description, formats everything into a blog post and pushes it right to my website. It's so handy. There's so many different things you can do with Pushcut. I did a whole deep dive video into it. I can link to that in the description below. I just don't have time in this video to go over everything. The last two apps I'm gonna talk about together because they do very similar things. That is Toolbox Pro and Actions. Both of these add extra advanced actions to shortcuts. While shortcuts is really nice and does a lot of really cool things, there are some pretty obvious actions that it's missing from its library and both Toolbox Pro and Actions kind of fill that gap. So for example, from Toolbox Pro, there's a couple that I really like. Uh, there's a bunch of Apple Music actions that aren't even close to being built into the Shortcuts app. There's an if or action for scripting and quick menu for building rich menus. And then from actions, there's some stuff that I like, like get file path, create image color, and just a lot more, like there's a lot in there. Both of these are free apps to download, so you can download them and go through their library and be like, okay, this is the these actions I would use, and then you can decide if you wanna pay for them or not. All right, so that's it. Those are the apps that live in the background of my iPad. Let me know in the comments below what are some apps that live in the background of your iPad. Not necessarily apps that you use every day, but live in the app library. My thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Use the link in the description below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off a premium membership. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.